Hello everyone and welcome back to the third and last section of our video tutorials about how to automatically create technical drawings by using Grasshopper. In the last videos we checked how to go from a 3D model to a 2D drawing and how to create a PDF template to be able to put our drawings in. In today's tutorial we will do the last step which is basically merging these drawings with these templates and finally exporting our PDF. We will be also adding the dimensions to our drawings and the bill of materials. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video if you haven't done so. So, let's get to it. So in the first video tutorial, we created these 2D drawings by using the Make2D component and now we need to scale and position these drawings in our templates. So let's start by the first page. The first page is where we have our um, isometric view. So in the first part that we have here, we have the calculation of the scale. So what we have here is the drawings and then we generate a bounding box of each drawing. So in this case, if we select the drawing in branch number three, so we have here the perspective view, and if we check here also the rectangle number three, then that's exactly what we need to fit in our page. So that's what we are gonna put inside this uh, uh, inside this cluster, which we explained in the last video tutorial. So we have the page width and, and height, which is the margin that we have from our template. And then we have the drawing width and height. Again, this drawing width and height is the real size. Plus the, plus the extra uh, space that we want in our drawing. In this case, the extra space is going to be for, um, for these dimensions. So we know that we have approximately one more um, offset or space that we need down the drawing, one more offset or space that we need on top of the drawing, uh, plus one more because it's one space for the dimension plus one space away from the template boundary. So that's why we have here Dimension offset multiply three. So 60 here plus 60 here. And the same here, 60 here plus 60 here. These first uh, two are in printing points units, page width and page height. These next two, drawing width and drawing height is in real size, so in this case millimeters. And the last two, it's, uh, and the last two are in printing points units as well. Finally, we have here whether we want this to be in a standard scale or not. Here we're going to put false because for this we're going to, for this uh, perspective, we don't need a standard scale. So that should be enough. So in this case, it is telling me that we need to scale this drawing 0 0.81 times. So how do we use this um, PDF scale? The first thing that we use it for is for the uh, dimension lines. The first thing that we use it for is for the dimension lines. So how do we generate the dimension lines? For this specific um, drawing, for this specific view, which is the perspective one, we generate the lines that we want to measure. So in this case, we have the width, depth, and height in the 3D uh, view. And we are going to use again the make 2 d component with the same isometric view that we created in the first um, section of these tutorials to create uh, our dimensions also in, um, also in the make 2 d view. So we have now here the perspective drawing, but we also have the lines that will measure our perspective drawing. So as you can see, this Make2D can be used not just to go from the 3D model to a Make2D, but I can also use it to reference dimension lines or other objects. Um, now that we have our lines uh, projected also in a perspective view, we just need to make sure that we sort them. So we saw already this in the first session. So we know here what is the index of our lines, and then we just sort them so that we know that we have first uh, width, then depth, and then height. Finally, we give it an offset, which is so that our uh, dimensions are not exactly on the drawing, but there is a little bit of offset. And to be able to do that, we use our scale, the scale that we just computed. Why? Because we need to offset this to the real size. So we know the printing point size is uh, 20, but we need to multiply it by, in this case, um, 1.23 times so that we get the real size. So in this case, it's 24 times. So that we get these two 
in real size. So we have the drawing and the offset in real size. That's why we need to multiply it here. Now we need to scale it and position it inside our um, PDF template, now in printing point size. Uh, this is the scale that we have here. So in this cluster, we're going to do that. So in one of the inputs, we have the, um, the drawing that we want to position. In the other one, the hidden cures, which are the shelves in this case, which we reviewed in the first section of these video tutorials. Then we have the dimension lines, how much we want to scale it for, and where do we want to position our drawing? In this case, it's the center of the rectangle. This is the rectangle that is coming for my PDF template, explained in the last section of this video series. And we're going to use the center of that rectangle to position our drawing exactly here, as you see. Um, so let's see what's happening inside this cluster. So we have one group for the visible curves, one group for the dimensions, and one group for the hidden cubes. And now we're going to use transformations to scale my drawing. Here we have the scale and the scale component to scale my drawing and to printing points. So we have here the uh, original size, and then we're just scaling it to printing points. Um, and finally, we're moving it to uh, the point that we give it, which is the center of our um, page. That's in one side. And on the other side, after we do this scaling, so remember, we first multiply the dimensions by the scale, so we get it in real size. But now we scale it back, so now we are back into printing points. So now that we are back into printing points, and now that the drawing is positioned in the page, it, it just when it is positioned, before that it shouldn't be done, just when it is positioned, is that now we're going to create the real dimension lines. So far, we've had just lines, the baselines, but not the real dimension lines. So that means to go from um, just a line to actually a line that contains uh, a space for the text, that contains um, these marks for the ends, etc. That's done through this cluster. This cluster is also just a C-sharp script that is able to generate everything that we need. So in one of the inputs, very important, is to have the line, um, the baseline of our dimension. If we want an offset, in this case, we want an offset of zero. But if you, for some reason, need an extra offset, you can add it here. So in this case, um, automatically gets created this mark sign. But if you want a different one, you can add here the geometry. How big is this mark size? In this case, we are basing it on the font size, which is eight. So it's half of the font size is going to be our mark. And uh, alternative text. In this case, because we have a perspective drawing, so the length of our lines are not exactly the dimension that we want to um, measure, then that's why we need to add an alternative text, which in this case is our width, depth, and height. We have here whether you want to add the text font, text size, etc., other parameters that the, uh, that you can explore by yourself, but they basically help you create these uh, dimension cures that are the ones that we are really going to use to put into our PDF. So let's continue to the next section, which is actually the squid instruction. So there is here is where we go from geometry to actually creating all of these cures inside a PDF. So here we have now the hidden cures. For the hidden cures, we are going to draw them. So we're going to add an instruction, which is in the squid plugin, instructions, draw. But this drawing is going to be with dotted lines, which is the one that we see We see here, these dotted lines. To be able to have that, we can add uh, the in the drawing palette, outline X um, component. And this component allows us to um, have these kind of patterns. So in the, well, I can also add a color. Any color in this case is also black, but I am giving it 50 of transparency so so that the lines are um, just a little bit visible so that they don't distract us of the main um, drawing, which is the black lines that we have. So that's why I give this color. And in this area, we have um, the dash. So in this case, I'm saying we have 10 of line, 10 of no line, 10 of line, 10 of no line, etc., etc. We could also add here other kind of patterns so that these lines are drawn differently. On the other side, we have the main drawing, which is the one that we said that is in a, a complete black color. And for that, uh, we are just using the outline component, giving it a width of 0 0.5. So the, uh, how white is our line and a color black. 
That's also with the draw component. Finally, we need to add the text for our dimensions. So this component, the C sharp, generates also our rectangle. So we have here the lines that we want to just draw that comes here into the draw. But we also have the rectangles, these rectangles that go in between our uh, dimensions. These are handy because these are exactly what we need to add here into our squid text component that, are, that is here in the instruction section text. So we have rectangle, we have the dimension text, which also comes from this cluster. And finally, we add font and paragraph, which is here in the drawing palette, font and paragraph that allow us to say that our text is eight of eight units of uh, height. Um, you could also set here the family if you want, uh, the font family, the bold, if it's bold, if it's italic, if it's underlined, etc. And in the paragraph section, for example, we just have that is center, center. So our text will be completely centered in every single of these rectangles. So in this way, we can merge all of our instructions. And these instructions is what will create eventually our PDF. We will check that uh, later in this video. But now we have the instructions ready. That was our first page. Let's check the second page. What is the second page? Uh, they are our um, different elevations on top view. So for the base dimension lines, instead of using the make to the component like we did for the um, perspective, here we do can create our dimensions from scratch. Because it is an orthographic view, then the dimensions are exact. So in this case, I'm selecting the two views that I want, the front one and the side one, the, the bounding rectangles of these two views. We can check them here. These are the two views, and these are my two rectangles. And then I can use the start point as a reference point start point of our um, rectangle as a reference point to start to build our line. So in this case, we want to build the depth for um, for this uh, view. Here we have the depth. And for the other view, we want to build the um, height and the width. So that's why we use the point stream skewers because we want to get two lines instead of, um, instead of one. Um, in that way, we can then uh, create every single cure from scratch, which is way better in terms of optimization than using the Bake2D. It's just that here, because it's a perspective view, we, we must use it. Whereas here, because it's an orthographic view, we can create it from scratch. Um, please always take into consideration your um, data trace. So in this case, I know branch zero are the dimensions for the front view, branch one are the dimensions for the side view, and branch four are the dimensions for the top view. Um, and that's it in this case. Uh, in this one, the PDF scale is coming from the um, calculations that we did for the template. So in, in the last uh, video, which we selected which template we were going to use through uh, the calculation of the scale for the second page drum. So that was already calculated. If you want to know how it was done, please review the last video. Finally, for this drawing, because we have three drawings, not just one. The previous one, we just had the perspective, but here we have three drawings. We need not just to position the drawing in the center, but we need to position the drawings in respect to each other. So if we have these three rectangles, <clears throat> now we need to be able to um, get them positioned. Let me show you here. If I have the drawings one on top of each other, if I do here now transform, and I add this uh, transform uh, transforms that I calculated here, you can see that we go from one on top of each other to every single one has its own space. That's done also very simply by using the bounding rectangles of each of, each of these uh, drawings, sampling the points of them. So in this case, I know that everything is going to be in respect to my front view. So that's why I sample this point and this point. And then I will move my uh, left view and my top view away from my front view. This is just a simple calculation of transformations. So this component, which is the one that we already reviewed, is able to not just take the normal scale, so the actual, how much we're going to scale this down, but also additional transformations, in this case, the ones that we have here, to be able to move the drawings also in other places. We go inside this cluster again, uh, then we will be able to see that our drawing, here that are one on top of each other, are not just scaled, but moved away from each other. So again, we go from everything on top of each other to everything organized um, and away from each other. And the final step 
is as before to position it in the center of our uh, PDF. So we just use a simple move to point component. Here is exactly the same. We take our group for dimensions and we use this cluster to be able to generate every single one of our rectangles for dimensions and our cures for dimensions to be able to convert all of that into an instruction for the hidden shelves, which are shown here as dotted lines, an instruction for the actual black um, clear cubes, and an instruction for the text, which is the uh, dimensions that we have here. Now we have the instructions for the second page. Now let's go finally to the third page. Third page contains um, the section and the detailed drawing. So when we check the third page, we are also calculating um, the scale. In this case, because I know that I want this um, section to be not covering the entire page, but just half of it, then that's why I take the margin width divided by two because I just want to take half of my page. Um, but I still have the entire height. So that's how that's why we have this little change here. But everything else is the same. How big is my drawing, drawing width, drawing height, uh, which in this case is just the depth and height, depth and height, entire depth and height, and the PDF dimension offset. Again, how much dimensions we, we want to have. We have one in this side, one on the other side. In this case, uh, we get 0 0.47 of the scale, and because the standard scale is set to true, then we also get a standard scale of six. That's the value that will be reflected here in the sketch scale. Creating dimension lines is the similar concept as the previous drawing. So we are creating them from scratch by referencing the drawings uh, bounding boxes. So in this case, we select the drawing bounding box of the section, and doing that, we can reference different points in this bounding box and start creating my dimension lines from there. We offset them and then we send them um, to our positioning drawings. Additionally to this one, we are also creating these hatch lines. These hatch lines we reviewed in the first section of our video tutorials. So please go to the first section if you want to um, check it out. But uh, now we have our visible cures. We have our um, um, hatches as well there, plus uh, dimension lines. So if we check this, um, we have exactly the same than the other ones. We scale it down, we position it. Uh, in this case, the point is not exactly the center. In this case, in this case, the point, if we check, we have here all the entire page. But because we are just going half of the page, then we need to then go 0 0.25. So that's half of the half. Here we have the half of the page, and then we're going half of that is our center of our drawing. So just pick a point, there is where your drawing will be positioned. Um, everything else is the same. We get the dimension lines, and we get uh, the instructions from squid component. Now, the last thing that we are missing is the detailed drawing that we have here. In the first uh, section of our video tutorials, we picked already um, the specific uh, drawing that we want to use for our detail. So with that drawing, we can also create the bounding box of it. And by using this bounding box, we're going to um, have the same concept instead of in, in we're going to use the same concept in terms of calculating the drawing scale. Um, so we are just using half of the margin width because we just have half of our page. And we are using the dimensions of our bounding box to be able to calculate the scale. In this case, we have a scale of 1.5 because it's a standard scale. For the dimensions, we have the same concept. We have our rectangle, now our bounding box. And then we use the points of this bounding box to start to generate each of our lines that we want to create. So in that way, we can quickly create the dimension lines. In this case, we have two lines of dimension lines. So that's why we have to apply twice the offset here. So we have uh, one that is the general height of the front of the drawer. So we apply one offset here, but additionally we apply the second offset here so that we make sure that the dimensions are not stepping on each other. Finally, we go to the same cluster where we have um, the hatch as well that we reviewed in our first session. And we convert all of that, we position it, 
in this case, uh, we are positioned um, in just uh, one quarter of the page. So in the center of one quarter of the page, not of the entire page, but just here. So this is the center of this section. That's the point that I want to sample. There is where I want to position my detail. And we also create the, we use the same methods to create our dimensions. But uh, here we have an additional um, um, step, which is the C sharp script. The C sharp script checks for collisions. So that if we have these uh, dimensions, if we check the original ones, yeah, if we check the original ones, you can see that here these dimensions are stepping on each other. Here they are. And that's because they are um, too close to each other, because they are too small. So this C sharp takes these rectangles, which are one on top of each other, evaluates every single rectangle, and makes sure that any uh, rectangle that is on top of other gets moved up to avoid this collision. So for example, we have here this um, part, but we also have here this part which is why you see this 10 moved up. Uh, the same happens here with this 15. So as you can see, all of this is done automatically through this c -shot. All of these dimensions are logics. And finally, we convert all of that into squid instructions. So now we have all the squid instructions from first page, second page, uh, third page, and third page detail. Now, how do we convert this instruction into a PDF? I need to, first of all, merge all of these instructions in a single um, in a single list. In this case, this list is divided by branches because each branch represents a page. So that means here, when I flatten, I'm saying that it's branch zero, which means that is page number zero. But as you can see here, I use the flatten component, flatten three component, but I flatten to one because it's the page number one. I here flatten here to two, page number two, and here also to two, because it's page number two. So that when I merge everything together, I, I get clearly every branch divided for every page. Here in this side, we have the template, PDF template instructions, which we reviewed in the last uh, section. But because this template is exactly the same, one after another page, so every single page has the same template, the same logo, the same title, etc. then that's why this template um, we need to duplicate it three times or as many times we have of pages. So that's why here we use the duplicate data component to get three times um, these instructions, script instructions. Finally, the magic is done. The final result, how do we convert all of this into a PDF? We get all of these instructions created from um, the Squid Shape Diver Edition plugin, and then we use the Squid PDF component, which is here in the Squid, Squid PDF component, which will generate every single of our pages. So in the output, we get three branches. Every single one contains one page. So you can see here the super PDF document containing one page, one page, and one page. And we go then to the Shape Diver plugin, PDF section. And here we have PDF um, merge PDFs. So this basically takes every single page, which is independent in this case. You can see here we have three values. Uh, the independent pages, we merge them, and we get at the end a grasshopper PDF document containing three pages, one single document. And this document, now we need to export it. If you want to export it locally in your computer, you can do it in two ways. You can uh, use this component, which is also here, PDF, write PDF. This will, every single time that it gets data, it will automatically send it uh, there. So in this case, we have here a local file, and this gets sent to um, to this file that we have here. So any change that I do will get reflected in this uh, PDF. For example, let's do a quick example. If I change this that we have here from A3 to A4, now you will see it just updated, and now we have uh, the A4 page instead of the A3 page. So any change that, we, that you do will be automatically sent to that uh, local file. Another way is to use the download export component that's in the Shape Diver plugin, outputs, and here we have download export component plus the uh, PDF component, which is uh, here, PDF export options. So this is the um, download export component, and this is the PDF export options component. Why? Because here I need to tell it which kind of format is my file. So I know that we have this uh, document, but I need to tell it that it's explicitly a PDF, and then I can give it a name to the file. In this case, I'm using the same project title. I'm using it for the name of the file. 
Now that I have that, I can right click, export locally, and now here I can just uh, save it uh, also in this um, in this uh, um, folder, any local folder, and that's it. This will not get exported automatically. Here you have to really right click and export locally. If you want to export automatically, you need to use the Grant PDF component. However, this component is also the one that generates the option in the Shapediver platform. So this one is just lock for local testing, this one. But this one is also used in Shapediver. So if we go back to Shapediver, when we go to the export section, this PDF export is what this gives us. As you can see, it has exactly the same name. So whatever name I put here is what you will see here. And that's where I am able to export my PDFs. Now, I missed uh, explaining one part, which is the um, bill of materials. The bill of materials is basically created by uh, extracting information from the model. So if you have our 3D model, if you build your model to exact uh, measurements for production, then you can extract all of this data from the model without much problems. So for example, here, uh, if you go to shelves and drawers, so here is where we are creating these shells for the drawers. Um, here, I'm using exactly the same inputs, exactly the same um, measurements that I used to create the 3D. I used to create this description. So this component is just taking a quantity. So how many do we have? What is the width of it? What is the height and what is the thickness? And then it's using the concatenate component to um, create a description. So in this case, we have just numbers, but then additionally, I add to these numbers that is uh, wide, uh, high, and thick, plus the millimeters of value. And then I join with the text join component into a single string. So it tells me that is two of 982 millimeters wide by, by 490 millimeters high by 20 millimeters thick, etc. And then we get here our description. I do that in every single part where I uh, think I will need this information. So for example, another here is the normal edge shelves, not the ones for drawers, but the normal shelves. Another section is here where I'm extracting uh, the fronts. Uh, no, sorry, here I'm extracting the glass, the glass pane. So how big is that? So how big is that? And then here uh, I can also extract that information. Um, and uh, additionally, other information is extracted here. For example, how many uh, legs we have, um, for example, here we are checking the body, the body dimension, so the, uh, what is the back uh, board dimension, the sideboards dimensions, and uh, finally we have here the drawers fronts dimensions, so that at the end we end up with, in one, in one last, uh, side we have the description in dimensions of each of the objects, but on the other side we also have uh, additional information. So for example, let's check the last one. We have 918 millimeters wide by 100 millimeters high by 15 millimeters thick. What? What is here? Number seven, boards for drawers fronts. So if we concatenate these two into one single text, then we now get all the information that we need. Measurements plus what it is, is boards for drawer fronts. Uh, I add other information here that I can also calculate. For example, based on the amount of shelves that I have, I know that I have eight shelves. So I can multiply that by two or by how many uh, shelf support pegs I need. And that's how uh, we can calculate other information. Finally, we do a text join. And with that, we get a single text, which contains bill of materials, all of the materials that we need. Of course, this is just an example, so this may not be complete. So if you want to make it as exact as possible, you can do it. Um, you can add here as many information as you want. And we use the same component that we have used before to create text and the rectangle that we, where we want to add this information. In this case, this rectangle is equal to uh, one quarter of our page. So in this case, uh, this section of our page is being extracted. And here is where I want to position the text. And that's why vertically I want to position it in the center. So that's how we get this information exactly positioned there. Of course, this text could be a uh, prettier, let's say we could put it into a table. You already know that you can use the draw component to draw lines here in the squid section and draw component to draw lines. And so we could make this in any format as you want. 
The simplest one, the simplest one is just simple text, but we could put here uh, a prettier, um, a prettier template. And finally, we decide to which page is going to go. So in this case, I'm flattening it to the branch number two because it's the uh, page where I wanted to the last page. And that's all. We started in the first session by creating the drawings, which was this part, creating the drawings. In the second section, we created the template. So basically where we're going to put all of our drawings. And the last section, we review our different pages and how to position these drawings inside the pages to finally export it as a PDF. Now, as this example, you can use this methodology for any other product. We've done, pro we've done projects from simple furniture to very complex architectural facades. So the options are limitless. And after the grasshopper model is done, now I can reuse um, this file to be able to generate as many PDFs as I want without the need of human intervention. And if you have it in Shapediver, then anybody will be able to create your product and get automatically a set of PDFs with detailed information for the construction of uh, whatever product you have. So we hope these video tutorials about how to create technical drawings have inspired you to use these methodologies in your own projects. This can save you a lot of time, increase productivity, and make you focus on what really matters, which is bringing your ideas to life. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with all of your colleagues and friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any informative videos like this one. And I will see you in the next one.